my dad happened to be a very accomplished artist and he went into architecture because he was afraid he couldn't earn a living as an artist. I grew up here in the 1960s when Art Brown's buildings were everywhere. They were, it was my dentist's office. It was my elementary school. They were the houses in my neighborhood. And it just feels right to me. Like, this is how things should be. His buildings are quiet, though. And so people sometimes will walk by a house like this and not realize that it's even designed by an architect. So sometimes you have to search to see what's really important about Art Brown. Arthur T. Brown was born in the year 1900 in Tarkio, Missouri, to middle-class parents of moderate means. He was named after King Arthur. He first studied chemistry, then architecture, and in 1927, he moved to the biggest city he could think of, Chicago, Illinois. So there's a very long tradition of modern architecture in Chicago, from Frank Lloyd Wright to Sullivan. Those are people that he was looking at. He was starting to sort of try to figure out what he would do as he began his career as a young architect. In 1929 was when the Depression hit, and so of course all major construction stopped. After years of struggle in Chicago, in 1935, Arthur moved west to Arizona with his wife Caroline and two young children to find work in Phoenix. As the story goes, he arrived with only $40 in his pocket. That might be true. It wasn't much money. I thought it was 20, but maybe it was 40. A year later, they moved to Tucson, where he would stay till his death in 1993. In more than 50 years, he would design and build over 300 buildings and work on 1,500 projects in Southern Arizona. He would be called a regional master, a pioneer, and would become Arizona's first fellow in the American Institute of Architects. Even though the Depression cut short probably his career in Chicago, it brought him to Tucson at a really, really important time. Art Brown was our first modernist at a time uh, when most of the buildings being built were designed in revival styles. People were trying to give Tucson an old world feel. He did not like the word style. He was offended when he heard that. He felt that architecture was problem solving and he felt that a building, the best building, would grow out of the site where it was. He was this unvarnished guy who used materials to create spaces in a very simple but elegant and subtly, deceptively sophisticated way. This is the Ball Paler residence in Midtown Tucson, built in 1952. It was designed for two librarians at the University of Arizona who wanted an egalitarian home. This house is large with ideas, and the clients, I think, believe that with this small envelope, the architect met all of their needs, because one of their needs was economy. You don't need a style when you have all of these design determinants already. You have the site, you have the owner's budget, you have the owner's desires, and you'll want to orient the house for, usually it's a combination of things. You want a good view, you also want some solar uh, features too. As well as being a pioneering modernist architect in Southern Arizona, he was also a solar pioneer, utilizing passive solar design for both heating and cooling very, very early, before it was well known or widely practiced. The Rosenberg House, built in 1946, is a great example. This solar wall would absorb sunlight all day and heat the house during winter. The Rose School was called America's first public solar building. It got up to 80% of its heat from the solar roof. The Ball Paler home uses a different method to control the climate. He was known as an inventor, and he'd like to figure out ways to make um, active devices in the house that the, his clients could adjust. So in this case, they're adjusting these roller awnings. The awnings can be adjusted to allow heat into the house during the winter and keep it out during the summer. Arthur used simple roof extensions to accomplish this on other projects. And I think today, if people remember that, we could bring these devices back to a lot of homes and they would be more logically suited to the place we live. This was his modernist creed. Uh, you know, he believed in doing things that made sense as an architect. He didn't do wacky, crazy things just for pure formalism. He did them because they were necessary. Even though you can see some things that are stylistically unique to Art Brown, I think he 
arranged his palette of materials and the interior layout and its, its strategy for adapting to the desert to each client. And that makes everything unique. Unique, like this home in Tubac, designed for World War II pilot Colonel Van Sicklen. It was designed to look good from the ground and the air. The colonel could park his airplane in this hangar, and then he could jump into the pool for a swim before going inside his home. The exterior of every building should have a good center of interest that draws the eye to it. Just the rhythm makes a design nice. It's a little bit like music. You have notes and you have, and you have the rhythm of the music. You have, this is a visual rhythm that you have. Gordon Brown became an architect himself and worked with his father in this office for 25 years. He never asked for work. He, he waited until it was given to him. He, he thought that you should, all your clients should come by word of mouth from other satisfied clients. You have less trouble that way because they want you. The University of Arizona wanted him to design these dorms on campus. They've been in use since the 1950s. Generations of students have been to his dormitories. He also was famous for churches. He designed a lot of churches here in, in and around Tucson. Arthur brought his modernist mentality and straightforward use of materials to every church he designed. And here's the repetition that's part of design, and here's the center of interest, and here's the front entrance to the church. You can still find examples of Arthur Brown's work in southern Arizona, but many of his buildings have been altered or demolished. There was a time when Art Brown's architecture was very out of fashion. Right around the time Ronald Reagan got elected, we went into a very reactionary phase of architecture. We had postmodernism. Suddenly, historicist styles looked good to people again. Tucson General Hospital, which is a whole hospital, was only about 40 years old when it was completely destroyed. They saved the steel skeleton and reused that, but hung a whole new postmodern facade on it. I think my dad was, was an architect's architect. He had a reason for all of the things he did. He lived for most of the 20th century. I mean, he lived through two world wars, a Great Depression. He lived a very full, creative life, and he left a great legacy. A lot of scholars, as they begin to look at this period and begin to understand the connection between the aesthetic ideals of modernism and the performance ideals of modernism, you start looking at people like Art Brown, and it becomes more and more important. The reason Art Brown's buildings make you feel good is because of their openness and their simplicity and their directness. You just walk in and it's like you're, you relax. You go, oh wow, this is great. There's good light, there's nice views, and he was just a really, really, really good architect.